Hey everyone, welcome back to Nintendo Pride. We have an amazing video for you today. Four big stories to talk about. Uh, one of them that's very near and dear to my heart. So this is going to be really cool. I mean, we literally have news like about Zelda's 35th anniversary beyond the Game & Watch. Can you believe that? Nintendo's actually giving us more? Maybe? Uh, beyond all of that, we obviously have up updates to the MPD and a whole bunch of stuff to go over. It's Metroid Dread sales, Switch OLED sales. Let's get into all of the amazing news here after I remind you guys to one, drop a like on this video, baby. If it gets to a thousand likes, we'll have a giveaway for one person uh, to win down in the comment section. So there's that. We also have our Prime Giving event happening on October 28th. I'll put a link to that event down in the description and the pinned comment. By the way, to even enter into the Prime Giving event, which involves winning a Switch OLED bundle, a bunch of other uh, people are gonna win other prizes, games and accessories and all this stuff. Also, beyond that stuff, we also uh, are gonna be doing $100 to charity. It's gonna be a lot of fun, a really great stream. Uh, but to even enter in any of it, you have to be subscribed to the channel. So, hey, why not drop a sub and all of that? That being said, bloop, let's get into the news today. So our first story is just revisiting something that seems to be an ongoing issue. I'm not sure if we're going to continue to talk about it after today, but it is still relevant today. Uh, and that is about the GTA trilogy that came out on all platforms and is a bit of a hot mess. We all know about some of the uh, character model issues uh, and, and like glitches and, and, and just weird things that have been happening in all versions of the game. Obviously the Switch having the worst performance issues, although all versions seem to be having performance issues. Uh, a lot of people are really coming out, including people who are game developers, and saying that this kind of looks like a rush job, which when game developers are calling it a rush job, that's very rare that that happens. Fans always say, argue, oh, this game is rushed. When game developers are saying it is, it kind of, yikes. But uh, there's a few things that we learned uh, because the game's out now and been data mined and all that. Uh, a couple things is, well, the first thing is that the game cut out a bunch of music, but all the music's actually still in the game. Uh, all they did was put a, Im implement a line of code that disabled certain tracks. Uh, but technically, modders could obviously go in, get rid of that line of code, and you can pretty much have all of the music uh, back into the game. So uh, obviously, this is usually due to licensing agreements and not being able to renew licensing agreements. But still, that is something. What I found really interesting, though, are two, are two other things happening with this game. First up is something that was found in the code, um, a comment. Now, I, I, comments, for the people that know, are where coders can leave comments into, like, they're, they're basically remarks about what code does uh, in the code base without it actually being code. Um, so, and here it says, um, this shit doesn't work the way they wrote it below. So, we'll just show the text and place the blip at the beginning of the mission, which is not how the mission, it doesn't sound like that's how that mission was supposed to work. And we're not really sure who they are. Um, Rockstar usually isn't gonna use the word they to refer to themselves. Uh, so it could be another company that worked on these games in the past, messed things up really bad, and the code doesn't work. I don't know, but to see this comment thrown in there is like, damn. <laughs> like, whoever was working on this bit of the game was not happy with the way it was coded. That is for sure. And their workaround for it is basically a band-aid job. It doesn't actually fix this particular uh, quest in the game. It just kind of band-aids it and makes it work in a different way that was not intended so uh probably because it would have took them a lot longer to rewrite the whole the whole quest so i yeah beyond all that it's not it, it, it gets worse for gta trilogy um the pc version of the game has actually been temporarily removed uh ha as has the rockstar game launcher so a lot of these companies are starting to do their own game launchers on pc and rockstar hasn't had too many issues with their game launcher until this game came out now it could be due to the demand for the gta trilogy that's leading to their their launcher having issues but the thing is the gta trilogy itself is not only equally broken on pc um people were having a hard time even connecting and doing different things in the game that require being connected it just it was a hot mess. So the games were removed and the launcher has been removed. Now I heard the launcher is supposed to come back at some point today, although there's no real estimate on when they're gonna have the GTA trilogy back up again for sale. So yeah, it, this is just 
for such a vaunted IP from one of the world's best video game developers in Rockstar, this is just a bit of a hot mess, ain't it? And this is why I keep telling people, hey, you know what hasn't been a hot mess? The re-release of Knights of the Old Republic that, that just came out yesterday. It hasn't been a hot mess and it's working flawlessly. You know what's also seemingly working flawlessly right now? Shin Megami Tensei 5 on Switch that launched today. Granted, these are completely different types of games from GTA, and you could just go play one of a billion copies of GTA 5 if you want instead. Of course, you can't on Switch because, of course, we're not special enough to get uh, GTA 5. We just get broken GTA trilogies. So, by the way, this isn't me trying to knock the GTA trilogy too much. I'm sure plenty of you out there are actually having a pretty good time with the trilogy, especially if you haven't revisited it since those games originally came out. So again, I'm not saying that these are all deal breakers for people, but they are, again, issues you won't really expect, or at least we shouldn't expect when a new something launches like this. Uh, but hey, what are you going to do? It happened. Let's move on to our next story. So Nintendo did something today that... Uh, Nobody really thought they were going to do, although maybe we could argue it should have been expected based on what they did for the Mario's 35th anniversary, because this was something they did for that. Uh, Nintendo does have an official 35th uh, anniversary celebration, and that celebration is, uh, well, Zelda Game & Watch. It was announced back during E3. AJ Noble mentioned this was the only thing they were doing for Zelda's 35th anniversary. They had no other games or anything else in the works. Well there is actually something extra happening for Zelda's 35th anniversary. Uh, that is that Nintendo has added a new official Ninji speedrun course, uh, which by the way is peculiar when they said the last course, the final Ninji speedrun course released last April and they called it the final course. Then it was just zipping around Bowser's castle. That was supposed to be it. So like Nintendo not only told a little bit of a fib, which, by the way, they did this with Splatoon 2 as well, where they said this is the final Splatfest, and then we ended up having Splatfest after the fact. It's kind of like, maybe they should stop using the word final. They could say maybe the ending, and then anything after that's a bonus. Anyways, here's the official word on this course. It says, a new Ninji speedrun course is here for a special occasion. To celebrate the launch of the game and watch The Legend of Zelda, a special course, Link's Lightweight Long Shots, is available right now in Super Mario Maker 2 until 11.21 um, at 6 p.m. Pacific time. Air out some arrows and hit all the pow blocks now it's not a hard course but the point of the, the, this course obviously as you're seeing is you know just like all the other ninja courses it's about how quickly you can complete the course not about the difficulty of the course um that's never really been the ninja speed run um you know calling card about difficulty it's about quickness so yeah i you know, one, I, I, I'm glad that we're still getting, I guess, some updates to more Super Mario Maker 2, which I think Nintendo massively underutilized. I think they even better utilized the original Mario Maker, and that was on Wii U. So, again, I, I like what, they, what they're doing here. I like the level. Uh, I think it's cool. Obviously, we all wish Nintendo would have did a bit more for the Zelda 35th anniversary, whether it would have been a Lego set announcement, whether, you know, even just some new merch would have been cool. Uh, obviously, we all would have liked to see, like, Twilight Princess and the Wind Waker HD. We all would have loved to see anything, right? Like, just Nintendo acknowledging the Zelda 35th anniversary outside of a Zelda Game & Watch and now this Ninji Speedrun course, which one thing I also hate about Ninji Speedrun courses like this is they're temporary. Um, I'm kind of sick of this temporary content. Nintendo's getting more and more into uh, the practice of temporary content. I don't like it because after the 21st, you can't play this course anymore. And that sucks. It's just like removing something that we once enjoyed. Do you guys remember Mario 35? Yeah, it was a lot of fun, wasn't it? Can't play that anymore. I... I don't like what Nintendo's doing and why it seems to all be centered around the 35th anniversary, like re temporary removed content. I, I mean, Super Mario 3D All-Stars, technically they don't print any new copies of that, although not necessarily hard to find copies, but at least right now. Maybe in 10 years it might be, but damn. The MPD is here for October of 2021, and this is obviously a very interesting month for us Nintendo fans because they launched the Switch OLED and also Metroid dread right like this is obviously a lot to talk about now we're going to cover a few general things uh, about this including some stuff for playstation and xbox but uh, most of this is going to be all switch related so for starters 
the big news here for Nintendo is Nintendo Switch is the lead platform again in terms of unit sales and dollar sales. They actually took this back after losing it in September after they had a record stretch of like 32 or 33 months or something like that, which is the longest streak anyone's led in unit sales. Nintendo lost it temporarily to PlayStation 5. Well, not shockingly, the month before Switch OLED came out because people were probably waiting on Switch OLED and by the sales in October, it certainly looks that way. Matt Piscatello, who put this information out on Twitter, did note that this was obviously helped by the release of Switch OLED. That's what helped Nintendo get the dollar sales crown, by the way. Uh, PlayStation 5 actually leads 2021 in terms of dollar sales, but their systems are more expensive than Switch. Uh, but yeah, having a more expensive unit out there, having that, that sell really well. Uh, unfortunately, he didn't really go into the specifics of how well Switch OLED sold, but the Nintendo Switch on a whole, the whole family of systems, led the way in dollars and units in October, taking the crown back for Nintendo that they temporarily lost for one month. And who knows, maybe starting a new streak all over again. We'll have to wait and see. So I did mention that PlayStation 5 leads in dollar sales for all of 2021. Uh, the best selling game overall in the entire industry uh, in the MPD is Far Cry 6. Um, it actually instantly became the eighth best selling game in 2021 and was the number one selling game on both the PlayStation and the Xbox. Uh, the number two selling game was Back for Blood, which also was number two officially on Xbox and PlayStation, which is actually a really good debut for such a, you know, a, a game trying to follow up a legacy of an IP that they're not allowed to use because Valve doesn't want to do anything with it. Uh, beyond all that, we finally get some Metroid Dread data. So Metroid Dread was at number three. Obviously, we know Metroid Dread's only on one platform and was the number one bestseller on Switch. Okay, cool. But what really matters is how much did it sell? Because, you know, the other ones, oh, it was number one, number two. But, like, we didn't get more exact data. Matt Piscatella gave us more exact data on Metroid Dread. Now, we don't know the, ex you know, the real raw numbers. The MPD doesn't give us raw numbers anymore. But here is what we do know. More importantly, it had the single best launch month in U.S. tracked history for any Metroid game. Oh, it's better than just being the best launch month ever for a Metroid game in the U.S. Oh, no, no, no. It gets bigger than that. Dollar sales alone. Metroid Dread has essentially doubled the sales of Metroid Prime, which was the prior best-selling game. So that's dollar sales, not unit sales. It does suggest it is ahead in unit sales by quite a margin, but yeah, there's a little price differences at launch, but yeah. Uh, Metroid Dread, guys, um, the US is one of the number, like, I think the US is actually the number one market for Metroid Dread. Let's just say there is a very high likelihood when Nintendo gives us their next financial update because their last one didn't include October. When they give us their next financial update, um, there's a good chance Metroid Dread is the best-selling Metroid game of all time. I called it. Looks like the, the MPD is leaning that way that we are about to see the best-selling Metroid game ever created. Now, how many units has that got to be? It's got to be at least 3 million. Um, I'm hoping for four or five, uh, but you know, a 5 million would be ideal to me because that shows growth for the IP. Uh, but yeah, Metroid Dread is literally highly likely the best selling Metroid game ever made. Deservedly so, by the way, it's utterly fantastic. In fact, I think the whole series deserves better sales. So good job, Mercury Steam and Nintendo for that. Uh, next up, we'll get into the uh, the total top 20 uh, in that MPD just for software in case people want to know because people like to know, you know, what games are actually selling out there in the U.S. Uh, so Far Cry 6 was at number one, Back for Blood at number two, and Metro Dread at number three, all brand new releases. Uh, we had Madden uh, NFL 22 at number four, uh, Demon Slayer, Kimitu, Yo, Yatu, the Honakami Chronicles. I know I probably butchered that. That's a brand new release by Sega that was at number five. FIFA 22 is at number six. Uh, Marvel's Guardian of the Galaxy, another new release by Square Enix. Uh, that is num at number seven. Mario Party Superstars, um, maybe surprisingly, although it did release later in the much later in the month, uh, is at number eight. I think um, Mario Party Superstars is going to outsell uh, Metroid Dread in the end, but it's also, you know, it came out much later in the month. So there, there was a lot longer time for Metroid to get sales. Uh, NHL 22 is at uh, number nine. That was a new release. Uh, NBA 2K 22, uh, which does not include digital sales or any, uh, you know, I mean, Nintendo, Metroid Dread. By the way, those Metroid Dread sales don't include digital. I totally forgot about that. 
Um, they don't count digital sales for Nintendo on these charts. So because of that, Metroid Dread being number three is already impressive, and it's doing these numbers against Prime without counting digital. Like, oh, man. Um, but yeah, uh, uh, the NBA 2K22 uh, doesn't have digital sales included either. Uh, at number 11, we have Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. At number 12, we have Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. At number 13, we have Ghost of Tsushima. At number 14, we have Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. 15 is Animal Crossing New Horizons. 16 is Minecraft. 17 is Marvel's Spider-Man Miles Morales. 18 is Diablo 2 Resurrected. Uh, 19 is Mortal Kombat 11. And 20 is The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, man. Breath of the Wild bouncing back into the top 20 after being just outside of it last month. Um, so yeah, really, really cool. Really nice data. Uh, and I'm, I mean, geez, dude, this is just good news all around. So our last story is a bit of an in-house specialty. Uh, so people might not know the full history of Nintendo Prime, specifically as a YouTube entity. Uh, there was a website at one point, and maybe there'll be a website again someday, but uh, Nintendo Prime actually started out on YouTube as a podcast. Uh, we were just a podcast. We had a, a separate channel. It was called the Nintendo Prime channel, just like this one is. Um, and yeah, we, we made podcasts. We, we did podcasts, we would clip you know, things from the podcast and, and do clips of it. It was basically just a podcast uh, that was supporting the website. And uh, it wasn't a very good podcast. Uh, I could, you could argue today's version of it's not very good either if you would like, but it's much better than it used to be. I, uh, I, I, I made a decision that I think is in the best interest of both this channel and the podcast. Uh, and we have moved our current rendition of the Nintendo Prime podcast to its own YouTube channel. That's right. We have now launched a Nintendo Prime YouTube channel uh, that we hope you guys want to go to and subscribe. We will have a link uh, in, in the description as well as the pinned comment uh, for people to go and subscribe to that channel. And I really hope that you do, not only because you want to continue to follow the Nintendo Prime podcast, whether you can catch it live or you want to watch it on demand after the fact, but I also want to be able to... Um, Encourage people to subscribe so we can at least get to a thousand subscribers, which we need to unlock all the features on YouTube. I think it's at around a hundred subscribers right now. Um, I am currently at the moment uploading back episodes. So we have 24 episodes of the new version of the Nintendo Prime podcast. I am currently trying to get all those episodes uploaded over there before we get to our fresh podcast, hopefully next week. I would love to debut our new podcast next week there, but if we're lacking certain features because we don't have enough subscribers we'll keep the podcast here until that happens but we really want to encourage people to go over to the new channel and subscribe what's also nice about having that second channel is that if we ever get hacked again or something happens here we can post some updates at the other channel so there's other reasons beyond the podcast to maybe go to that channel and subscribe but again the Nintendo Prime podcast was and I think will always remain the foundation of something that I do here on YouTube even as I separate it out on its own so we have a kind of a more focused nature here at this channel discussion and news and then obviously over there more long form uh, podcast content maybe some clips of the podcast or certain topics on the podcast released throughout the week uh, I think that that makes a lot of sense I think it's going to um, be a great way to expand the audience of just the podcast on its own and our audience here being more focused um, it was a bit of a tough decision because we've been running the podcast on this channel for years now uh, but it also is just in the best interest, I think, for everything. I think the podcast could actually see a lot of growth if it's left to be on its own. I hope. Maybe you guys think the podcast sucks, so you don't care. But I really hope that you guys want to head on over and subscribe to that channel. And uh, what's also nice, too, is because the only thing being put up there is podcast stuff, any notifications from that channel are going to be podcasts. So it actually gives a lot higher chance that you will get notified of podcast live streams, uh, the clips we upload, all that. So... Um, yeah, I don't know. I really hope that you guys want to go support the show. Um, I would really appreciate a, a, a subscribe over there. Again, nothing's going to change necessarily here. We're still going to have our normal content. Um, I am actually, <laughs> I have a bit of a channel update to do, but I, I'm going to wait on that channel update. Uh, kind of look forward to it later today is what I'm trying to tell you. I think I'm going to put out a channel update video. Um, I just got a few things I got to sort through first, but Thank you guys for tuning in because uh, I have more to talk about than just the podcast. Um, I hope you enjoyed today's news. Uh, it was lovely. Who knows? Maybe we get some surprise news later today and I have to make a, another video. But you guys are awesome. And I'm going to catch you guys in the next video.